Now let's see if a patient has come to us in good time. She was having some treatment and uh, she conceives and I have always told such women that yes, if you are taking infertility treatment and you conceive, first thing after the pregnancy test is positive, first thing you must do an ultrasound with me to find out if it is an intrauterine or extrauterine pregnancy. So yes, there is a unruptured ectopic pregnancy. There is an unruptured ectopic pregnancy, you have done the ultrasound, patient is pretty stable, obviously there is no problem right now, patient has just conceived and on the ultrasound you see that there is a pregnancy in the fallopian tube, I mean the baby will not be so big, just for demonstration I am showing you like that. There is a early pregnancy with an unruptured ectopic pregnancy, patient is pretty stable, she is sitting in the, uh, in the uh, waiting room and she is reading a magazine. You have a unruptured ectopic pregnancy, you are discussing in your department how to manage it. So yes, there is no emergency. You can plan a procedure, whether you want to do a surgery, decide what are you going to do. So unruptured ectopic pregnancy, first of all, remember when we had a ruptured ectopic pregnancy, what was the only one management I told you? You do the resuscitation and the only surgical management was throw the tube in the dustbin, total salpingectomy, that was the only management I taught you and I told you to ignore all the other surgeries. So now there is an unruptured ectopic pregnancy, the tube is not ruptured, the patient is stable. So I can do some procedures by which I can take out the ectopic or deal with the ectopic but at the same time save the tube, isn't it? So what is the problem with a ruptured ectopic? It's too late to do anything, just cut it and throw it off. If it is an unruptured ectopic, we can do procedures to save the tube. Very, very important punchline, okay? Whatever we do, try to save the tube, all right? IVF is still a very difficult and expensive procedure in our country. We are doing IVF regularly, but then it is best that if women they have their own tubes, they should have a normal pregnancy after this ectopic also, she can use this tube, isn't it? So the idea is whether you do medical management or surgical management, you can save the tube. So medical management is to give drugs to kill the baby, surgical management is to take out the baby without damaging the tube so much. So yes, what is the medical management? We can medically use the methotrexate, we can give it uh, systemically into the circulation of the mother or we can give directly into the sac of the uh, fallopian tube where it can degenerate the trophoblast and degenerate the fetus. So methotrexate can be given systemically or locally that will degenerate the pregnancy. Similarly, actinomycin has been given and we can also give potassium chloride to stop the baby's heart from uh, beating. And we can give mifepristone, even prostaglandins have been tried, but mifepristone and prostaglandins not the most highly preferred managements of the medical treatment. Or you can do surgical management. Surgical management is to make an incision on the tube so that we can take out the baby and save the tube. So yes, how do we make that incision? We make an incision on the bulge of the tube, the ectopic bulge here, I can make an incision there. So now I will have a tube looking something like this. After the incision, there will be a hole made in the tube and through this hole, the fetus can be taken out, the sac can be taken out. So yes, if I show you uh, my hand as a uterus and this finger as a fallopian tube, this is that ectopic bulge. So in this bulge, I make an incision like this. This incision is a surgical linear incision. Look here, a linear salpingostomy, making a hole in the tube in a linear manner. Okay, don't do transverse incision, you will cut the tube into half, isn't it? So a linear salpingostomy and the fetus can be taken out. And 
after this lot of people say that uh, this incision you can just suture it and close it. Now that is not required. Most of the time when you make an incision and leave it open, take the baby out and leave this incision open. Of course, stop the bleeding around the cut edge, leave it open, it will re-epithelize in 24 to 48 hours, isn't it? So please do not have, you do not have to suture it, that is outdated, okay. So if you leave it open, it is called making a hole and leaving it open, it is called salpingostomy. If you make incision, take the baby out and then suture the cut ends, it is known as the salpingotomy, the S goes off, salpingostomy, making a hole, suturing it afterwards, salpingotomy, alright. So I will write it down there. So, medical management, surgical management and the surgical management of choice is a linear salpingostomy and salpingotomy, salpingotomy, that is not done anymore. I am not saying that it is wrong, I mean it is not the preferred manual, it is outdated, do not think that it is contraindicated, I did not mean to say that. So, this is the surgical procedure of choice, this is the surgical treatment of choice, alright. Then, you can also do a resection anastomosis. Now, this is a elective uh, setting, the patient is uh, relatively stable. So, what we can do? We can make an incision on the tube and we can re it. So, I make an incision like this and here and I can take sutures to re these two cut ends. This is a planned surgery, it is a nice uh, planned surgical incision I will give and I can make sure the bleeding is next to nothing and I can re, re and save the tube. It is much different from that ruptured tube. Ruptured ectopic, the tube is in tatters. It is a blast. That ruptured tube, I told you, you cannot repair it. You have to throw it in the dustbin. If it is an unruptured tube, you can repair it. So, unruptured ectopic pregnancy, we can also do resection and astomosis. We can also do milking of the tube. You know, you can milk the tube. The tube has an ectopic and you can milk the baby out. You can squeeze the baby out. Now, when you squeeze the baby out by milking, can you see? I am squeezing the fallopian tube. That will spoil the cilia. It will destroy the cilia. And in fact, it is associated with more ectopics. So, milking of the tube, more ectopics probably next time. So, yes, this is not done anymore not done anymore. Some of your teachers will teach you milking of the tube and they will in fact even ask you in your MBBS exams that show us how you do a milking of the fallopian tube in a management of an unruptured ectopic. Please, these are all outdated things. The only best surgical management is the linear salpingostomy and there is another one, resection anastomosis. Both of these have similar results but resection anastomosis requires much more time, much more clinical and surgical acumen and you need an operating microscope, can be done, we have done it, but linear salpingostomy, make an incision, stop the bleeding, end of discussion. So that is why linear salpingostomy is the surgical treatment of choice. So between these two, medical or surgical management, how do you decide? We know that medical and surgical management, whatever I am doing, in a case of an unruptured ectopic pregnancy, I am trying to save the tube. Now, how do I decide whether my med medical management is going to be good or surgical management is going to be good? So yes, the criteria is based on the size of the ectopic and the HCG. So if the size of the ectopic is 3.5 centimeters or more surgical management. If it is lesser than this, medical management. If the HCG value is 5000 international units. More than that, surgical management, less than that, medical management. And if the cardiac activity is present or absent, then also we can make our decisions. Cardiac activity is present, then medical, uh, surgical management and if it is absent, I can do medical management, okay. So, these are the three criteria which make me decide that I am doing conservative management, I am not throwing the tube away, 
whether I am doing medical conservation or surgical conservation of the tube. I can do surgical conservation by linear salpingostomy if the tube is bigger than 4, 5 centimeter size, the HCG is too high and the cardiac activity is present. But if it is less than 3.5 centimeters, then we have to do, we can do medical management and the chances of it being successful is very high, almost 90 percent chance of success. So, less than 3.5, less than 5000 and cardiac activity absent. Now, wait a minute, some of your teachers may say that, okay, no, we can do even at 10,000. Some people have reported even with 20,000, chance of success is less. So, for the best success, I will go by these laws. If you really want to know, nowadays some people say this is 4 centimeters, okay. So, I am sure in your exams, they will not give you 3.5 and 4 both. They will give you a large one, you know, 5, 6 centimeters or they will give you a small one, 2 centimeters, 2.5 like that. I am very sure that they will not ask you a choice between 3.5 and 4. So, do not get worried. So, 3.5 is what I have taught you. Just be on the lookout if some new recommendations come and they ask for 4 centimeter size, okay. So, medical management, surgical management of a unruptured ectopic and I uh, will show you a small clip of a uh, laparoscopic management of a unruptured tube now. So, now we are going to see the management of a unruptured ectopic pregnancy. Uh, like I told you that if there is a fallopian tube which has an unruptured uh, ectopic, then we can make a linear salpingostomy incision, a linear salpingostomy and that is what I am going to show you here. This video is uh, around 8-9 uh, months old. You can see that uh, I have held the fallopian tube with a grasper and that uh, this bulge, this is that bulge which is the ectopic pregnancy and I have now gone in with a needle cautery. Yes, this is a needle cautery, this black one and that is going to make the incision on this fallopian tube. This bulge, like I said, we are going to make incision and the distended blood and the fetal products start uh, bulging out of the tube. This can bleed a lot also, but then uh, you have to be uh, injecting some vasopressin into the base of the uh, mesosalphine so that uh, I have not shown you that part. That gives good amount of vasospasm to prevent torrential bleeding while you are doing the surgery. So, after doing this uh, incision, I have put in a cannula which is pushing water at high pressure so that uh, uh, rather than pulling out the fetus from the, pulling out the products of uh, gestation from the fallopian tube, we try to uh, hydro dissect them. The hydro dissection is safer because we do not damage the tube much. Can you see this, uh, this is the small uh, whitish thing which is hanging here. Yes, that is actually the, yes, this is actually the, that white part is actually the uh, villi that is the placenta and the fetus of course, it is too small, it is around 7 weeks pregnancy, you would not be able to see a fetus in that so well. So, th those are the tissues which we do a hydro dissection and we slowly make sure that uh, uh, we move this uh, cannula into the uh, incision which we made so that this comes out bits by bit and uh, we do not have to pull out and damage the tube because we, we, we hope that this tube can be used for a normal pregnancy next time. So, after doing that, we look for bleeding and once the bleeding has stopped, uh, can you see this is uh, the end result of the surgery. You have seen almost the whole tube is uh, seen properly now, the ovaries below that and this tube is uh, intact and there is just one small incision on the fallopian tube which will heal in a few days and this will be a tube which will be as good as normal. So, yes, after doing a laparoscopic uh, or an open salpingostomy and if you do it properly, you can save a tube and this tube can be used for a normal pregnancy. Some of you may feel that there could be a chance of a repeat ectopic. That is anyway there for a woman who has had one ectopic, I told you, there is a 15 percent chance the next pregnancy may be an ectopic. But if you do a linear salpingostomy, then the chance increases by itself. A normal woman has a chance of an ectopic pregnancy 1 to 2 percent time. With the linear salpingostomy, it goes up to 7 to 10 percent. Yes, it is there, but there is a 90 percent chance that the woman can have a intrauterine pregnancy with this tube which we have saved, all right.